Hi, so the name's Bill? Yes, Bill Gates. And you want to run our charity? You bet. Okay, so what do you think qualifies you for the role? Well, I was a really ruthless business leader and that got me tons of money. Wow, I have to admit, that's pretty impressive. When can you start? Now, this might sound silly, but it isn't too far off from how charity actually works today, and that might be a problem. Because they have a lot of money, billionaires have a ton of power to decide which charitable causes live or die. Gates alone has spent over $50 billion. Meanwhile, some question whether billionaires should exist at all. Gates, for his part, thinks they should be taxed more, but still exist. I think if you go so far as to say that there's a total upper limit, that that might have more negatives than positives. And for him, a big reason is precisely because billionaires play a big part in charity. The world is a far better place because of the philanthropists of the past. And that's because philanthropists are better at innovating to solve problems than governments. I do think philanthropy is, is going to grow and take some of these things government's just not good at working on and discovering and, and, and shine some light in the right direction. There's a persuasive logic to this. Our culture certainly holds up business leaders as powerful visionaries for change. And in charity, billionaires like Gates, perhaps subconsciously, almost view themselves as kings, fit to preside over their huge personal charitable kingdoms, single-handedly deciding the fate of numerous causes simply by virtue of the fact that they did well in business. But charity isn't business, which raises important questions about this whole approach. To start with, there's no doubt that business leaders are successful in what they do, but a lot of the time, the way they go about being successful isn't so pretty. They're often known for being ruthless and lacking compassion. After all, that isn't great for profit, and Gates himself is no stranger to this. Perhaps these are the ugly but necessary qualities for a successful economy, but are they the right qualities for someone who gets to decide which charitable causes sink or swim? At some point with charity, you have to make value judgments about what things like fairness, equality, and justice mean. Is a successful business leader better suited to making those judgments than anyone else? And if they aren't, why should they in particular have so much more power over charity than everyone else? The same outcome could be achieved by simply picking someone at random from the population and giving them billions to spend on charity. Of course, once we have worked out which charitable causes are worthy, Gates might be right that business leaders' skills could be useful to ensure projects are set up with the right people, stay on track, and are efficient. But at the moment, billionaires don't just make sure charitable projects run smoothly. They also make those high-level value judgments to decide which causes are deserving or not. And it's hard to see how their business background is of much relevance to that, something Gates himself partly acknowledges. Of course, some might say that it doesn't really matter who makes charitable decisions, just that there are a lot of people to experiment with different ideas. But there's still a finite amount of money in the system, so some experiments will happen and others won't. And if a billionaire doesn't like an experiment, it won't happen. What the billionaire personally favours takes priority. And Gates is himself a textbook example of this. He's passionate about education and has put a lot of money into it, despite receiving criticism over his priorities. But if he didn't have his money, those priorities might never have received the support that he has given them. Instead, if someone else had that money, they might have spent it on very different charitable causes. Again, the question of why it is he who gets to decide these priorities so much more than everyone else is a tricky one. Now, there isn't much to be gained by complaining about an imperfect situation if there isn't anything we can do about it. And it certainly isn't a terrible situation. Charity does have a really positive impact in people's lives. But even then, is there really no alternative? One option might be to democratize charity, empowering a diversity of approaches but without concentrating power in the hands of a select few super rich philanthropists. The idea of a universal basic income points us in one curious direction. Citizens could be assigned money on a regular basis which they could give to charities through a website. And if that weren't enough, people could also elect representatives to decide how money should be spent on their behalf. Imagine someone who cares about the environment electing an environmentalist who could work out on their behalf which charities are the best choice for helping to preserve the environment. 
and other voters would elect representatives with different priorities to that, generating a diversity of approaches and innovation, with every representative trying something different. It's hard to tell whether that'd be any better or worse than the status quo without trying it. But at least it's worth noting that we might not be stuck in a binary choice between charity being directed by a select few billionaires or by governments which have a hard time innovating. There is a third option to democratise charity which might be worth thinking about. 